From can to curbside, that's about all the thought most of us give to garbage. But in countless communities across the country, solid waste management tops the list of municipal concerns. Years ago, Detroit was a city looking for a solid waste solution. Today, Detroiters are assured safe and efficient waste disposal thanks to the Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Facility. In an average week, Detroiters generate enough trash to cover the playing field of Tiger Stadium with a layer of garbage three feet high. Detroit had relied on landfills to dispose of its waste, but more than 10 years ago, city officials realized available landfills were filling up. After carefully examining the options, resource recovery was selected as the centerpiece of a comprehensive waste management plan. Advanced resource recovery technology provides Detroiters with safe, reliable waste disposal. In addition, it reduces reliance on landfilling, produces steam and electricity from garbage, and provides jobs for a number of local residents. City of Detroit Finance Director Bella Marshall, chairperson of the Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Authority, believes the Detroit facility will be a model for other cities just coming to grips with waste management problems. We have the best technicians in the world. We have the best contractors and operators in the world. I'm here now with a very sophisticated panel that tells the operators everything that happens at every moment. Our emissions are being monitored, not just by the city of Detroit, but by the Canadian government, which we're helping to pay for, to assure our good relationships with Canada. They're being monitored by the Wayne County Air Pollution Control Commission, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, and the federal government. Uh, we have the most stringent operating permit uh, in the United States today. So it's very, very heavily regulated. It's very, very closely monitored. It's very, very well operated. And it's also very, very safe. Although the resource recovery plant is sometimes referred to as an incinerator, the resource recovery process involves much more than just burning garbage. The material that is burned is everyday household waste like chicken bones, cereal boxes, banana peels, and papers. Michael Brinker, general manager of the Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Authority, describes how this everyday garbage is converted into a fast-burning fuel. A different feature of the Detroit Resource Recovery Facility is encompassed in the Waste Processing Building, where we receive the residential waste. The initial process is to shred, open, mix the solid waste that you and I generate or present at our curbside for collection. The primary purpose is to tr attempt to make a relatively homogeneous fuel product that can be efficiently and completely combusted. The very first step in the resource recovery process takes place at the scale house. Each incoming truck is weighed on a computerized scale. This allows the authority to maintain an accurate account of the amount and source of waste entering the facility each day. From the scale house, the trucks move to the waste processing building. Each truck deposits its load in a large holding area called the tipping room. When operating at maximum efficiency, the facility can easily handle more than 3,000 tons of garbage each day. Crawler tractors spread and sort the waste, then feed it onto conveyors. The waste passes through an inspection station where small cranes are used to remove large non-combustible items from the waste stream. Although the conveyors seem to be in charge, all waste processing operations are controlled by a sophisticated bank of computers. The computer operators control and monitor the entire process from a glassed-in control room overlooking the processing area. After inspection, the conveyors take the waste through shredders, which reduce it to 6 to 12 inch particles. From there, the waste is conveyed to a magnetic separator, which removes metals from the refuse. Ferrous metals extracted from the trash are recycled. After the metals are removed, the refuse passes through a series of screens which filter out glass, rock, and other non-burnable material. The screens also separate large pieces of waste, which are directed to a second shredder. The result is a dry, fluffy material called refuse-derived fuel, or RDF. With the processing complete, the RDF is transferred to a fuel storage room capable of holding 3,600 tons, 
roughly the amount of RDF produced in a day and a half. A closed conveyor connects the RDF storage area with a separate building housing the plant's boilers and power block. As it is needed, RDF is transported from storage to a bank of three boilers where it is burned. A special firing system spreads the fuel across the combustion chamber for even burning. Temperatures in the boiler are kept at a minimum of 1,800 degrees. The high temperature ensures that nearly all RDF is burned and significantly reduces air emissions. The boilers produce steam, some of which will be pumped through pipelines to two nearby Detroit Edison facilities. The steam is used to heat downtown buildings. Additional steam is used to drive turbines which produce electricity. The electricity will supply power for the operation of the resource recovery plant, and some of it will be sold to Detroit Edison. You may have seen large white clouds floating over the resource recovery plant. This is not smoke. The clouds are composed of extra steam passing through roof vents. The white steam you see coming from this part of the plant, the cooling towers, is as pure as the water that comes from your tap. Chemists continually test water and steam from the plant to ensure purity. Some of the RDF, such as clay and paper, pigments in printing ink, and mineral salts in vegetables, will not burn completely. Particles of garbage that do not burn completely are called ash. The ash is mechanically mixed with water and transported to the ash loadout area where it is deposited directly into trucks. The trucks are sealed and the ash is taken to a landfill. At the landfill, ash is deposited in a specially designed area called a monofill. Only ash will be buried in the monofill. The ash will be surrounded by two liners, one plastic and one of compacted clay. The liners completely contain the ash, much like a bathtub. A drainage collection system will capture rainwater and other moisture for transportation to a wastewater treatment plant. The monofill also is surrounded by wells, which can be used for monitoring. The monofill has been carefully designed to ensure environmental safety. It meets and exceeds recently enacted Michigan laws for the safe disposal of ash. Bulky items that cannot be processed by the resource recovery plant, like mattresses and appliances, are deposited in a different area of the landfill. While the city still must rely on landfills, the resource recovery process reduces the volume of material hauled to landfills by approximately 75 percent. The resource recovery plant meets all federal, state, and local regulations for protecting air quality. The Detroit facility uses electrostatic precipitators, or ESPs, to control stack emissions. Exhaust gases from the boilers are channeled through ducts into the ESPs. An electrical current passes through the gases, charging particles suspended in the gas. The charged particles are then attracted to plates inside the ESPs and removed from the gas flow. But no one is sitting around hoping the ESPs are doing their job. The Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Authority has been part of an area-wide air quality monitoring program for more than a year. The testing compares the air quality in different locations before and after the resource recovery plant began operating. In addition to the monitoring program, regular readings of stack emissions are taken to assure the level of air quality remains well within federal guidelines. In addition to Detroit, representatives of Wayne County, the state of Michigan, and Canada are participating in the monitoring program. It is one of the most ambitious air quality monitoring programs ever instituted by a resource recovery project. Operating the plant safely and efficiently is the responsibility of combustion engineering, working with the Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Authority. CE project manager Sam Shagwa says a major goal of the firm is to make this plant an example of sound waste management practices for the country. Our first objective is safe, reliable waste disposal for Detroiters, and we work hard to provide that. This plant is a showpiece for Detroit and combustion engineering. We often receive requests for information and tours from other cities interested in resource recovery. Visitors, especially student groups, are amazed at the technology we use 
and the high standards we maintain. We always encourage young people to follow careers in resource recovery. We see this plant as an important part in the growth and future of Detroit. Although the resource recovery facility will be the focal point of Detroit's solid waste management program well into the next century, the city also is working on the development of other waste disposal methods. Well, I think individuals were often confused. Uh, the plant is not our overall solid waste management plan, although Detroit, as the largest producer of solid waste uh, in lower southeastern Michigan, and certainly in this county, has to use combustion incineration as a, as a major part of our plan. But it's one of many facets. Recycling is a facet. Uh, the collection of special or hazardous household waste is another facet. Overall volume reduction uh, is our goal, using incineration, recycling, and the reduction and special disposal of special and hazardous wastes. A public education effort has begun to better acquaint citizens with household hazardous waste collection, composting of leaves and yard clippings, and recycling. The city is requesting assistance from the state to enhance these programs and is working with the private sector to develop other recycling efforts. Detroit is committed to providing reliable waste disposal services for its citizens, maximizing use of available resources and protecting the environment. The Greater Detroit Resource Recovery Facility is key to accomplishing those goals.